Well, I showed you this install the other day, this nice super wide ski skin from Kimpex. We're gonna reinstall these skis. And uh, we're gonna get the track in with this chain case and that cool new driver set up on the axle here. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then we're one step closer, well, we're about three steps closer to getting this all back together. Looking pretty good. It looks awesome right now, right? Can't beat it. And it's cold in the top this morning. That's why I've got my sweater on underneath the shirt. So that's a good sign. Let's put those skis on first. When you're installing the track and the drivers in the chain case, it's really hard to do without the skis on the front. It just wants to wobble all over and then you just end up fighting it the whole time. And the way I have this set up here, it isn't really the way I'd usually do it, but for camera work, it's gonna be easier that way. Usually what I do is I'd have the skis on, I'd have the back just raised off the ground, attached to a tree, a hoist, just move it around as much as I need to and then install the track. But you know what, this is gonna work out just fine. I'm just gonna get some grease here for those spindles. I painted up all these old parts. You know, I didn't, um, I didn't powder coat all these. Now, if you're doing a full restoration, we did powder coat the frame because that, that was needed. And this is a bit of a limited budget kind of thing, so I'm not going completely crazy. If some people wanted to, they could have all these parts and pieces coated. We're just not gonna do all that. Because pretty much our starting point wasn't perfect, and I wouldn't take a chassis like that that had to be all re-welded up. I wouldn't take that kind of chassis to do a complete restoration on it. I'm just gonna put some grease on here. Slurpy that up. That's it. Oh, look at that. I like it. If you haven't greased your spindles on your land lately, best be getting to that. These were really hard to take out. Just because they were almost seized. That looks good. You know, these old 71s have a really narrow stance to begin with. I'll show you this a little later on, you'll be able to see it. Quite often when you're pulling the old fuel tank out, you'll notice that it's cracked, or you might even crack it. Well, Kimpex makes a replacement fuel tank for these Alans, and I have replaced many of them. So we're gonna install this arm here, the steering mechanism. I'm kind of going off the other Elan I have outside, but a lot of these get, have been changed up over the years. Sometimes the linkages are kind of flipped over. This one's gonna go like this for now, and you know what, I might get into it a little later on and find out that, oops, I do need to change something, but that wouldn't be the first time that happened to me. Looking good. I'll probably come in here a little later on, make some adjustments to this, but for now, that's gonna be just fine. You know, there's some play in here. I'm gonna come in and tighten up this bolt. You can see it's a little loose, but that whole inner part of that shaft is worn out. I might even put a thicker bolt in there, bring it out. These things take a lot of abuse over their life, and uh, that's what happens. Things get loose. Get this old exhaust grommet in while we're in here. I like doing this kind of thing, because you know what? It's getting closer. Closer to completion. It's fun putting things back together. It looks cool. Now, we can put the chain case on the track. Let's 
going to get messy. We're going to install that track now with our axle that we put these nice new drivers on and these bearings from Kimpex, of course, with these seals. There's two sides to this. This side goes in the chain case, and this side goes in the uh, far side, if you will, the right-hand side sitting on the sled with this little cup. Now, depending on the year of your sled, this cup, when you bolt it on, you might need a retaining ring that goes on your axle shaft first. If you don't put it on there, you have nothing to bolt it to. So if you put your whole thing together and you forgot to put that ring on, you're gonna look kind of silly and you're not gonna feel very good about it. You're gonna have to take everything apart. On the 71s, maybe some 72s, the frame is actually threaded. There's some uh, weld nuts on the back side of it. And that's what I'm gonna bolt into. I just put a bit of uh, uh, anti-seize on there and I lubed up this seal with some grease. It makes everything go together well. On the inside of this cup, you can see there's a little groove there. And that's where this part of the sealing surface clips into. So that's it. And it's the same on the other side. There's a grooved part of the shaft of the chain case. Now, this is not going to be fun. I know it, because I've done it before. And it's going to be especially hard on here. <laughs> so let me see how I can do this. I've done this many times. A little bit dirty of a job but not too bad. You guys can do this at home. If I can do it, you can do it. One side goes through first. Is that, the... Is that all the way through? No, you can do On what? The bearing? Is the bearing through? No, I think the driver's going up. There you go. That side. Now you got to get the cogs into the track in order for it to just fit perfectly. There we go. It's a good idea when you're putting your chain case in, if you don't know the history of your chain, to change it. These things get stretched out, they start to crack. These things are 40 years old, there's been a lot of uh, shock loads put on them, little kids hammering on them pretty hard. This chain I had. Uh, I only had it in use for a couple of years in one of my lands, so I'm going to reuse it. But very good idea if you're going through all this work to replace it. Just like the gears. If you're looking at the gears, they're worn out, there's a chipped tooth, replace it. But this is how I put it back together. I stuff the chain in. I've gone through the bearings in this case. I've replaced those where I saw fit. Drop the gear in. And it should make its way just about to the bottom. You see there's a little gap in between that chain in there. So all you need to do is twist it around a few times. And you'll see that it's, you see that, brought up. It's perfectly on the gear now. That's what you want. Gotta go on that gear. I just take a piece of wire. And I'm gonna hold this chain into place. Because if it falls down, it might get bound in there. You don't want that to happen. So now we're going to install this. And we're going to install this little washer. Come on over here. So just push your axle shaft back a little bit. That hopefully will be enough room to get that in. Let's see. There we go. Slip your cup into there. Now that is a little tricky. I'm going to admit it. Not like your newer sleds. I've got to get that spline shaft in the spline gear of that gear, if you will. Generally speaking, once the cup, the bearing starts to go into the cup, you're halfway there. You just need to spin this gear around until it goes. It's gonna to be tough for you to see. I'm just gonna throw this little washer on now. It's important that it's there. There we go. 
And there's enough room for a cotter pin to go through there. So here we go. Look at that. One hour wasted looking for that. But we'll never lose these again in the shop. So I'm going to show you a little bit of a trick to putting, installing your cotter pins in kind of a bit of a recessed area. This is all I do. I just sort of do one of these a little bit, mainly at this little tip. Not too much. just want to bend this down and around the shaft. You don't want to pull it across because then it will get into the seal and then it will rip the side of the seal out. And then you're in for a loss of all your gear fluid and you've just ruined all your hard work. You don't want to do that. There. That's it. I'm not going to put that plug in. You know what? I think I will. I'm just going to clean it a little bit. Just because I want to make sure it has a decent seal. Well, there's a little trick I'm going to tell you about. Because you're going to go out, you're going to buy an old land, you're going to take it for a drive, it hasn't been running in years and years, and maybe the bearings are going to go to the chain case. And it happens for a reason. The old seals on these shrink up, they get dry, and then they start to leak all the fluid out. So always make sure you check, make sure you have enough fluid in here. And one thing that I do, and I'll go over it later on as well, one thing that I do is with the gear oil that I put in, I always put a few squirts of grease in with it. The grease, as we all know, has a tendency to make rubber swell. So if you put that grease in there, it's going to swell up that rubber and it's going to make your chain case nice and tight again. It's going to swell up all the seals for you. Now don't fill your chain case full of grease. I'm only talking a couple of squirts and that's all you need to mix with that. Just a, just a, like a low temp grease. That'll be fine. Okay, so things are coming together. Now, every one of these chain cases comes with a shim if they need it. And you're gonna wanna install those. That's pretty easy. Just like that. That. One of those. One of these. Back that off. Now there is some movement in there. That's the way you want it. Gonna fit on? Yes, it will. Sweet. Okay. So I think we've accomplished a lot today. Fuel tank's kinda in. Skis are on. Steering linkage is on. Chain case is in. Drive shaft is in with the track. That's a lot. So I'm gonna say goodbye for the day. I want you to come back because we're gonna do some more on this. We're gonna install the bogies, the rear axle shaft, the seat that wiring harness ready. We're going to put the engine in. I sort of have some things to do with the engine. I'm going to show you how to rebuild the Tilly carb. I do have a very in-depth detailed video on that online. If you just type in tilts and carb rebuild, you'll see it. It's pretty crazy, but it shows you exactly what to do. But we're going to go over that anyway. We're going to do that again. And a few other things. I don't really think I need to rebuild the motor yet, but uh, I'm going to bring you to a guy's place and we're going to show you how to do a complete teardown of a 
and the LAN engine. It's going to be pretty cool. But this is coming together. We're also going to install a cool seat by Goose Reproductions. He makes some very good stuff to help you get your sleds back on the road, these old LANs. So I got to thank you for coming. Make sure you go check us out at www.powermods.com forward slash forum. Go in there. You can talk to the guys. You can ask questions. You can post pictures of your sleds. It's actually becoming very popular and very busy in there, which is pretty good. It's a very active forum. It's nice to see. And you know what? I couldn't do it without you guys. So thanks for coming. Make sure you check us out online as well. And you know what? Check out my jet truck. Yep, that's right, jet truck. I have a truck with a jet engine on the back. Thanks for coming. I'll just get this done here. So I don't forget about it. I forget about things. I forget things. Jamie? Yeah, do I forget things? No, I forget. Yeah, I forget. We found the cotter pins. We did. We found the cotter pins right in front of our faces the whole time. And you can't tell me I didn't put them somewhere where we couldn't find them. I put them again. I did. I put them exactly where we could find them. Yep. I don't know how many times we looked at that. <laughs>